Today we're gonna create spirals of beer around beer in Photoshop. Hey guys, and welcome to Flirt. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNacer. We're doing some really cool stuff in Photoshop today. We're creating beer spirals all, all over the place. We got a lot to take care of today. A super cool uh, series we're going to be doing um, with Liquid here. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get started because we got a ton to do. Um, so from last episode, the only thing that I did really is um, I grabbed this thing online. I just typed into Google double helix and I found this thing and we're going to use this as a model in which to create our our ad. So I'm going to use my marquee tool, make a selection around the word double helix and then just delete that. You can hit the delete key. Now I'm going to use my move tool, go ahead and just rotate that around and um, I'm going to change this from normal down here to screen and then I'm going to hit command I. Okay, so command I invert the image um, it goes from black to white white to black and then now this is what we actually see so what we're gonna do is use this I'm gonna go ahead and center it around our logo there and uh, we're gonna scale this up and we're gonna use this as kind of a template in which to um, guide the the waters that's going to be or beer it's supposed to be beer we actually used water because beer would have been sticky but we did photograph some beer and it looked pretty much the same so we were like you know what whatever we're just gonna use water so it doesn't smell like nasty beer in the studio for a week. Um, but if you guys are purists and want the nasty beer smell for a week, uh, be my guest. You can do that too. Okay, so we're going to grab this double helix. This is, again, just a template. Like this is not, um, this is not going to stay like this in the final image. This is just uh, what we're going to be using to, to make sure the, the drops stay like they are. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do, um, let's go ahead and get out of that. We're going to go to File. We're going to strips and load files into stack. All right, and we're going to browse, and I'm just going to open all these files here. All right, we're going to hit open and um, hit OK. You guys can see it's just going to load these in. These are the splashes that we were taking yesterday um, directly in front of the beer bottle. So um, we took multiple pictures of splashes, water. You guys should check out uh episode one in the series where we actually showed you guys how to photograph this sort of thing and um you'll see we made like a really cool device that actually splashed water around and around and around okay so now that these are all together in in a new um in a new stack here i'm going to group them together and then we're going to move them onto our other object and there we go full screen this out we're good to go so these are all in the beer as well in the beer Okay, and what, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and start cutting these out. And to do that, we're just going to use a lasso tool. Um, we're going to do a really quick cutout today. This is, you know, in the, in the final image, it probably took um, a, a bit over an hour to get all these splashes and everything like that exactly how we wanted to. Um, we don't have that much time today. So what we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to be doing a quick job. And I probably won't finish all the way to the bottom, but it's, it's the same thing over and over and over again. All right, so what we're basically did I made a selection right there around our object and I'm gonna hit shift command I and then I'm gonna hit delete okay because I know I don't want anything else I just want the splash and that's good enough for me so let's do that a couple times um, make a selection right around here we don't want the beer we don't want the strip boxes we don't want any of this and uh, so we're gonna select it all out invert the selection and then hit delete now the reason why we had all that stuff in the frame when we were photographing the splashes um, you might be thinking to yourself, well, why don't you just photograph the splashes on a black background? Um, that's a really good point. We did photograph some splashes on a black background, but however, if it's just on a black background, you're going to miss some really nice details. And that is these details here. The little bit of color, the green, that this is actually reflecting from the bottle. You can see this is, you know, this color is in the bottle and it's reflecting the bottle itself. So without that detail, um, it wouldn't look like this stuff was actually wrapping around the bottle. It would just look like you photographed it on a black background. So that is not cutting corners and it's doing things right. Getting the accurate reflections in the liquid itself rather than just trying to fake it or anything like that afterwards. So it's a bit more work, it's harder, but um, you know, in the end it pays off. All right, we'll probably just do a few of these. Um, we're not gonna go all the way to the bottom of the helix again. I already said that, 
but I'm re-saying it. So you guys don't expect it, and you don't say, oh, why didn't you go to the bottom of the helix? I'll say, because that took an hour, and it's just doing the same thing over and over again. Okay, let's start off with this guy. Now, the cool thing about using um, a, a template here is, let's go ahead and minimize this group, bring the template onto the very top. Um, the cool thing about using a template is you can see, like, you know, what needs to happen with each one of these splashes. So we'll start off from the very top, and um, you can do, let's see, I might stretch out the template a little bit more. There we go. Let's just zoom out and um, make it fit a little bit better. All right. There we go. That's a little bit better. And here are our splashes. Now, if you wanted to take straight down splashes and then kind of like really cover them around with like the warp tool, you could totally do that. Um, it would just not look as natural because when water actually does splash out this way and splash out, the, out that way, you get the splashes that actually come off this side and they're coming off that side and this side. Um, so that's why we wanted to do it for real. All right, let's just kind of uh, size this. I'm just using my move tool here. Um, stretch it out a little bit wider. And uh, now what you can do, you can grab all kinds of tools. I'm going to right click and go to warp. And then you can warp this water droplet. See, we're warping it so it's actually, you know, starting to uh, fit and flow just like our double helix here. And d again, depending on how long you spend on this, is how good it's going to look. Um, it's not gonna look perfect if you don't spend a whole lot of time on it, but you can see you can definitely get it to wrap around a bottle. So let's go ahead and make the double helix invisible. And if we just want the splashes to be visible, we'll make that visible there. I'm gonna change this layer blend mode to something like uh, color dodge is kind of cool. It creates that effect. Or we can go to screen which is just gonna show the white splashes. So you can see like it's already starting to do our double helix. It was roughly there because we photographed it that way, but um, it's already starting to do it um, because of you know having this in, in this way. Okay, How, that didn't make any sense what I just said, but whatever, <laughs> there we go. Let's stretch that out again. I'm gonna right click and go to warp now, and we're gonna bring this in there. We're gonna bring that guy up there. All right, and just kind of stretch this around and get it to wrap around the double helix as well. All right, so we'll probably just do the top of the double helix today because, again, it's the same thing over and over and over again that's happening. Um, we just, you know, show you guys more of the same. Okay, let's go ahead. I'm going to make the template invisible, and now we're going to go back down here. I'm going to put a layer mask on this, and we're going to layer mask out our bottle so remember we did like a pretty rough job um cutting this out and for the most part that's going to actually be okay especially when you have something that's photographed on black because you can use all kinds of cool blending modes to get that black to show up how you want it um you know but if you do still have like a heineken bottle in in the file you need to take care of that so that's what we're doing now is uh we're just taking care of would actually you know would show up even if you set it to like a screen blending mode or something like that and there we go and i'm trying to balance doing this very quickly with having it not look bad it's a tough balance i suggest you try it there we go so most of the stuff that i'm trying to get away is just the the stuff that isn't black and that isn't the water drops or the beer drops depending how you want to look at it. There we go. Let's get that away there. Cool. Looking good. I don't know what that thing is there. It's the bucket, I think, that we use to catch the water in. There we go. And coming all the way up here. All right. Looking good. So that's our layer mask. We're going to change this from normal down to screen. And now I'm gonna hit Command L. You can see a little bit of this light area exists. So if I hit, click on my layer and hit Command L, I can kind of push it towards the dark end a little bit. And because what screen does is screen makes the lighter areas visible and darker areas not visible. If I just darken up the darks a little bit, uh, we should be good to go. And then we won't see those darks anymore. We just see the light splashes, which is exactly what we want. All right, that looks good. Now it doesn't look exactly real because there's no color in this. There's no uh, there's no dark. It's just the light. 
So what we have to do is, I'm going to duplicate that by hitting Command J, and we're going to change this from normal down to color dodge. Okay, and with the color dodge layer, let's just bring that under. So we have color dodge is going to bring in some color. Screen is going to bring in the like the lighter areas. So without the color dodge, you can see there's no there's no color in this liquid. And now we're going to hit Command J again. So we've got three different copies. And this one we're going to set to um, either soft light or color burn. Um, this is going to make up the dark parts. Let's do soft light. I think this will work well. Um, this is going to make the dark part of the of the liquid. So we're going to make this layer uh, completely black. And then I'm going to go in here and paint in, basically just grab my brush tool, paint in just where the liquid is, uh, white on the layer mask. And you can see this is the contrast that's necessary here um, shows, you know, where the liquid actually does get a little bit darker. And here, like over the bottle and things like that, um, this actually might be better to do um, instead of like a color burn layer. You can see it's still not that transparent. So we're probably going to go in there with just maybe even like a normal layer or a multiply or something and then just get that visible um, looking a little bit better there. All right, so a lot of the time when you're doing this sort of thing in Photoshop, it's just using different blending modes in combination with one another. Um, like don't, I don't know, don't ever expect to just like grab one blending mode and have it work perfectly and be like, all right, I'm done. I don't need to do anything else. Um, I think you'll find most of the case that uh, in most cases that you'll, you're going to just have to do a little bit more than that. Okay, so our liquid looks pretty good. Let's just darken everything down um, beneath our liquids. There we go. Let's open this guy back up and lower the opacity of that a little bit. That's going to help the liquids just look a little bit more real. All right. There we go. The liquid's looking pretty good. Let's again, I'm going to do exactly what I said earlier. I'm going to hit Command J on this, and we're just going to change this from a normal layer to a multiply layer. Okay, so now you can see the liquid kind of coming through there. It looks a little bit better. Let's just lower the opacity, and we're good to go. So remember with this also that uh, this liquid isn't necessarily, it, it's not reflecting, or it's not black liquid, but it is reflecting what would be a black background. So if it's not black, it's also going to be reflecting what's what's going on behind it, which in this case is this bright glowing green. Um, in the actual photo itself, it was not bright glowing green. All right, let's go ahead and group those. And we have one helix for the liquid. And we're going to do the same, basically the same exact thing um, with this. But me doing it again, hopefully, will help you guys out, um, kind of get a, get a pretty good hold of what we're doing here. There we go. So we're going to Photoshop this out. And that's why we're not going to just, I'm not going to do the entire helix because literally it's the same exact thing over and over and over again. And you guys aren't going to learn anything from that. It's just going to be like, all right, we got it. We got it. There we go. And layer masking this out, you, you can be kind of sloppy, which is pretty nice. As long as you get the Heineken out of there, that's the most important thing. We already got one Heineken. We don't need another one. All right, so we're using the layer blending modes to kind of do most of the work for us. Like using a screen blending mode, it's going to make all this dark stuff invisible or, or all the dark area invisible anyway. So you don't have to make a perfect selection if all the dark areas are going to be invisible. And that's really nice. I mean, it's if you had to make a perfect selection of all these little water droplets, um, I think it would wind up taking you quite a while. So uh, I don't suggest doing it. Just do the method that works a bit faster and uh, looks just as good. There we go. And we got that away as well. Let's just make sure we're good to go. This needs to go away. Okay, so let's set this from normal down here to screen. There we can see it's a little bit lighter. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna, again, hit Command L on this, darken that up a little bit so the background kind of goes away. Let's lighten up the lights a little bit. There we go. This is already looking so cool. I'm going to hit Command J on this. We're going to change this from normal down here to color dodge, which again brings back the color into, into the image. And we're going to hit Command J again, and we're going to change this from normal to color burn. Remember this layer mask needs to be black, and then we're just going to paint in white right around here. 
Now, the other trick with the double helix is making sure that, um, excuse me, beer's getting to me, making sure that um, one of these objects actually goes in front of the bottle and one of them goes behind. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the double helix back on. We're gonna make a new layer and just choose a nice color here, contrast. And we choose one, color, one line to go out in front. So this is like comes in front, then this is in back, and then that means this one is in front again. So this would be like always in the front, always in the front, always in the front. So that's just kind of like an easy way to keep it in mind what's going to be in the front, what's going to be in the back. So with this one, if this is going to be in the back right there, we're going to shift click all those, group them together, put a layer mask on that, and then we don't want any of this to be visible right there, right? So we just put that layer mask invisible there so it's not going to be showing up. There we go, the liquid is not visible there. And then we have this layer is going to be not visible there. So anytime it crosses from the left to the right, it will be visible. Anytime it crosses from the right to the left, will not be visible. And that's how it looks like it's actually swirling around there because it's, you know, the front side is only visible when it should be visible. So without these layer masks, you can see it's a little bit um, confusing, but with them, it is, it's starting to give you that actual three-dimensional look that is makes the image a little bit more believable. All right, and we're gonna do the same thing like we did on the left side, uh, sorry, on the right side here on the left. Make this visible, and this is, again, a color dodge layer. Sorry, this is a color burn. Um, color dodge makes it a bit brighter, and it mixes with your colors, and color burn makes it darker, but still mixes with your colors and I'm trying to do the fastest job I possibly can. Um, doing this a little bit more, we'd probably want to do like a little bit better job layer masking, um, but we're gonna be applying some like glows and things like that to these little droplets in just a little bit. So that kind of helps mask out an error. All right, and you can see the droplets look great when they're on black, because that's how they were photographed. So. Anything you can do to bring them either closer to black or make it look like they're reflecting what's going on in the background um, will work. Just remember that they, you know, light passes through water and it, it gets diffract, diffract, refracted? Diffracted. Diffracted is not really a word, is it? Mm -mm. Not a word. So diffracted. I'm so diffracted right now. All right, there we go. Looking good. I was trying to paint that layer mask, but it was on the other layer. <laughs> All right. I was like, why isn't that working? And if you wanted to, you know, like lessen that a little bit, just grab black and then you can kind of play around a little bit there. All right. Just paint away a little bit. Very cool. We're looking great. So the next thing we're going to do, and again, we're just going to do these top ones today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and collapse this entire group. We're going to shift click to a new layer. There we go. And I'm going to hit command E. Okay. So basically I just got this whole group on a new layer. We're going to make a new layer underneath it and I'm going to fill that with black. So this is just the splashes now you can see and they're on a, they're white on a black background. So now we're going to go to select. We're going to go to color range. We're going to select out our white again, just like we did before. All right. Hit okay. And so now we just have the white as a selection which we can put that on a new layer, new layer, and we can fill that with white. So on a new layer, we have just this. Now, why is that helpful? Because we're gonna basically do the same thing we did on the other layer um, with the glows. So we're gonna double click on this layer. I'm gonna bring in an outer glow. We're gonna bring our fill down to zero, our outer glow. We're gonna bring up our size here. We're gonna bring this to color dodge. There we go. And you can see that's what's creating this slice glow on all of the little bits of, there we go. That's what creates the drop bits. So basically I just, I made the water drops into a selection, put that on a new layer and then put a layer blending mode on there. And uh, I just need to create that black background in order to create that new layer. All right guys, and that's it. I mean, this is exactly what we're doing. Um, for the final image, we just did this a couple more times, grabbed a Heineken logo and stuck it down here, and uh, that's the end of the tutorial. Whew, 
that was big. That was impressive. I hope you guys learned a ton, um, and I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial because it was a lot of fun to make, and uh, you guys can make something that's like totally magazine worthy in, in one day. Just uh, shoot a couple images, have like a cool idea to start off with, and um, at the end, Photoshop it together, and you guys can do it too. It's really not that hard, and um, it's awesome. Now, I want to see you guys' work in all the magazines across the whole world. Oh, it's going to be great. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching Flurn. I'm out of here because I'm getting kooky. Bye, guys. Kooky. Kooky like a kookaloris, which is actually a lighting modifier.